Alright guys, Tom here and welcome to a new video. Now I'm going to be reviewing WWE Monday Night Raw on the 6th of August. So that was last night and I was up from 1 o'clock till 4 o'clock in the morning watching it. And it was pretty good. I think that the overall rating of the show was about 7.5 out of 10, 8 out of 10 at the most. And I'm basically going to tell you all what happened and all the good stuff and all the bad stuff and what they could probably have done better. And I'm basically going to review it. So I'm hopefully going to be doing these for the next few weeks. And yeah, so we're going to get on to the first thing. And uh, the, the show started with a new intro and song. They were using the song from um, Monday Night Raw 1000, which I really like that song. It's a slightly rappy, kind of cool, modern thing that they've got going on. I really like it. And the intro did include um, mostly all the superstars. I've In the past, they've used uh, intros which didn't really have all the superstars in it. But I think I noticed that there was no other superstars missing in this intro, which I thought was quite, pretty cool. And Daniel Bryan has did No, No, No t-shirt, which is awesome. Now, the show started with AJ coming out, and she announced basically two of the matches that she set up for tonight. It will be Cena versus Daniel Bryan in the main event, so that was the last match of the night. So we're all building up for that for the end of the night, and it was also Big Show versus Randy Orton. Now, these are two big, big matches, and it kind of got the crowd going and everything. And I think it was really good that they got AJ to announce it and everything in the ring to get the night going and everything. I thought this was a really, really good touch. And then... CM Punk comes out and apologises to AJ and tries to get the SummerSlam match cancelled because last last week he obviously when uh, Cena went for the FU on Big Show, CM Punk came in in the ring and basically broke it up and that meant that AJ then decided to turn the SummerSlam match into a triple threat match and uh, basically CM Punk was trying to get this match off and then AJ refuses CM Punk's um, attempts and CM Punk was kind of like undermining AJ and everything and kind of like manipulating her and then John Cena comes out to a huge pop I must say and he does actually say AJ's perfume smells nice which I think was funny and we have had now had the past two roars starting with kind of a CM Punk segment and basically Cena was trying to say that he is trying to force the WWE to give him respect because he CM Punk thinks that the WWE universe feel like he's turned his back on him but he wants them to respect him and he's just trying to force us the fans to respect him and Cena's just having a go at Punk and then Big Show comes out the big sellout and AJ gets really really angry and it's kind of funny at the time and then she calls a vote for who CM Punk should face tonight and using the new Raw active thing, they're kind of introducing and the old social thing and thing, which I think is really, really good how they're getting the social thing going. And actually, there's so many trends going on when Raw's on for WWE related. I think last week there was about five WWE related trends going on out of the ten on Twitter, which is amazing, really. And they basically, AJ calls a vote and uh, Michael Cole sets up and everything. And um, the WWE Universe have a choice of Rey Mysterio, The Miz, or Kane. Now, Miz is boring. He's the Intercontinental Champion. He has nothing to do with CM Punk. Kane does kind of have something to do with CM Punk with all that love triangle AJ thing. But he wasn't really in the triangle. But it's kind of confusing, that thing. But um, Kane's already been done. And Mysterio is kind of a weird one. Um... I, I, I voted for Rey Mysterio and luckily Rey Mysterio was chosen. He got 47% of the votes. Whether WWE actually do take in the votes or they just make it up because we all know that it is scripted so how would they be able to like kind of set it up before the voting? Maybe they already knew that Rey Mysterio was going to get voted or they actually just make the votes up but I definitely voted for Rey Mysterio so I was happy to see this and that was the match coming up. So Rey got in control really really quickly. He was in control from the start and Ray, if you looked at Ray, you could definitely tell that he's put on weight on his break. We did see him a few weeks back, but he has definitely put on weight. And he was fighting in a t-shirt. I'm not sure if he forgot to um, take the t-shirt off or what, or it's his new ring attire or something, but he still had his t-shirt on which is a bit of a weird one. And the match is really, really back and forth. I mean, CM Punk was in control and then Rey Mysterio. The match is really exciting. During the commercial break, we did actually miss an attempt to do a 619 and everything like that. I mean, it was simple Rey Mysterio, really. He was all about the place, flying everywhere. In the end, Punk did actually win. He slightly earned respect from that match because Rey Mysterio is a hard opponent. But I do think that that was kind of like a filler match to try and get the WWE Champion into Raw. 
but they couldn't really think of a match to give him so they just got a vote going to get the WWE Universe in it so I think that was kind of a, like a slightly pointless match really so I was slightly disappointed but it was a pretty exciting match so I would have given that match about an 8.5 out of 10. Now quickly after that match we did see a segment with Alberto Del Rio parking his car and he pushes Rodriguez so it kind of gave us an idea that Alberto Del Rio would be seen in Raw tonight and for one Rodriguez left the keys in the car but I'm not going to say anything yet if you haven't seen it but yeah basically he left the keys in the car and on the commercial break we did see an advert or a promo for Wade Barrett with his beastly Manchester accent so it kind of shows that, that Barrett is going to make a return which is awesome now after the commercial break we see AJ and Alberto Del Rio in her office and she sadly says that she doesn't have a match planned for him tonight and um, he's pretty happy about this because obviously he doesn't want a match before SummerSlam he wants time to prepare and then AJ swiftly turns and says you do have a match Although she doesn't say who it is. And then we go and see another promo which says HBK is going to be live tonight. And since it's in its hometown of Texas, he did it last year. I think I think it's kind of getting a bit annoying now because he's done it so many times. And it's just like celebrating what he's done and he's just not doing anything. I mean, he had the match at WrestleMania 28 and we saw him on Raw 1000. But he hasn't really had a match. And I don't, I don't see the point of bringing HBK out just because it's in his home crowd. He just talks and stuff. And yeah, so. I'm, I'm gonna leave that till when he actually did come out but it was just a promise to remind you and we did get that on the whole night just advertising HBK's return and then the late announcement for the Alberta Del Rio match is in fact against Christian who I don't really like I mean a lot of people do like him as a wrestler I'd, I'm not a huge fan of him I don't like it when he try and gets the crowd going with his collapse that pisses me off how he just does it it's really annoying and yeah, so we had that match, and um, Del Rio now had two matches in the past two shows, even though he did say that he didn't want a match at all until SummerSlam, which is, I think is quite funny, because Booker T obviously did give him a match as well. And um, Del Rio was immediately in control. He's a really good wrestler, but I just don't think he's that good. Now, we had a really, really controversial thing which happened. Rodriguez, which I don't think should be at the, at the edge of the ring at all. I think it's a really stupid distraction, and it always seems to cause some kind of stir. And Rodriguez basically scares Chris where he goes up on the turnbuckle and then um, it makes Christian basically fall off the rope and um, the referee gets distracted by telling Rodriguez off. Del Rio takes his boot off and whacks Christian round the head which I thought was hilarious. I mean why is it really going to hurt him with the boot anyway? Del Rio gets him in a cross arm breaker and Christian eventually taps out so Alberto Del Rio got the win and Alberto Del Rio is actually looking in really really good shape for SummerSlam. I think he's a really good contender for actually coming away from SummerSlam with the World Heavyweight title by the way guys. I think it would be a really good thing if he actually did do that. So yeah after he was celebrating something really funny happened it went onto the big screen on the um, entrance arena the new entrance arena actually and it showed Sheamus next to um, Alberto Del Rio's 200,000 Ferrari and Rodriguez had actually left the keys in like I said earlier so Sheamus hops in and says that he's gonna go on a little cruise around Texas for the lols and uh, <laughs> it was so funny how Alberto Del Rio was just flipping out and everything having to go Rodriguez they couldn't do anything about it so Sheamus just drives off out of the uh, by backstage basically and that's all we see from that until later. Now coming up now was the first match of AJ's two matched plans thingies that she did at the start of the match where it show against Randy Orton and Randy Orton came out to an amazing pop. I love this guy. He is a beast and I just farted. But yeah Randy Orton came out with a huge pop and he's doing really really well to win the fans over at the moment. I thought, thought he'd come back as a heel but he actually hasn't. He's come back as a face and then show came out with his usual kind of like crowd not bothered really. And then um, show was basically chatting shit the whole match and Austin's controls when he was in control they were really infrequent but um show was pretty much in control all the time and Randy Orton was just trying to keep show down on the ground because he's such a hefty guy but anyway Big Show went for the choke slam and Orton kicked out at two the crowd went wild after the kick out basically Randy Orton went for the RKO when they were both walking around outside of the ring and then show went for a mahusive spear and the basically the referee counted out for 10 and both of them were disqualified which I thought was a pretty disappointing ending the match had really really good potential and it just didn't deliver so I was pretty disappointed about that match that brought my rating down to about six I'm sorry about that guys but it wasn't a very good match at all but what happened after was pretty good now after that match show basically tried to give a knockout punch to Randy Orton but Randy Orton dodged and RKO'd him and Orton just stared him down will he have a future title shot I'd really like to see it but I'm not sure guys please comment 
I'm slightly confused why AJ did make that match against one of the contenders for the WWE Championship Big Show against CM Punk for SummerSlam. Now the next match was pretty awesome, it was one of the best matches, surprisingly really, it was Kurt Hawkins and Tyler X versus Ryback. Now obviously it's a handicap match but they have to tag in and they were doing this awesome teamwork um, game plan they were tagging in and out and it was hilarious because one time they were kind of make taking the mick because one of them tagged each other and they didn't want to tag it it was pretty good you've got to watch it and ryback was in ultimate control this guy is an absolute powerhouse and um, basically what happened is ryback did a huge absolutely huge clothesline and did a huge backdrop on Tyler Rex. He pinned him in normal circumstances because he'd already pushed Kurt Hawkins out of the ring and it was it, the ending was not that good but I thought the actual match was really really good with all the referee and everything and how they are using Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins. These guys are awesome. I think they've got a really really good future in the WWE. I really really like watching them so yeah. Now the next match was a tag match. It was actually a rematch from Money in the Bank PPV uh, so it was basically Darren Young and Titus O'Neill with AW. They, oh, the annoying AW versus Primo and Epico. Primo and Epico. But sadly, Rosa Mendez wasn't there for some reason. It was in the, during the commercial break they both came in, and then when the commercial break ended, the, R Rosa Mendez wasn't there, which is so disappointing. Anyway, the prime time players are really, really impressive to me. Like Kurt Hawkins and Tyler Rex, they use really, really good teamwork. They're strong, especially Titus O'Neill, and they've got loads of swag. They've got it's a new idea. They're using a W and a really really good idea and I'm really really happy that they're doing this it's a really original kind of idea they're going along and it's a really good tag team they've basically got really really good futures in the WWE and I'm happy about this even though AW is really, really annoying, it's a really original idea, so I'm not really bothered. It does kind of get the crowd at them, but I'm, I, I think they use this to their advantage because they use this to pump the crowd up for Epico and Primo, which is a really good idea. Now, Primetime did a really bad thing. They uh, Basically, AW called timeout when they were kind of losing, and he's, the, he's their manager, obviously. Uh, they walked out of the arena, and then Kofi Kingston and Archuve came in, and whilst Primetime had their backs to Primo and Epico because the match was still going on. Primo and Epico grabbed Prime Time and brought them back in the ring. It was back and forth, back and forth. Epico did a Carlito and backstabbed Darren Young as he was the active tag partner and he pinned him and it showed Kofi Kingston and Archive smiling and so were Epico and Primo and once again the primetime players took their eye off the game and lost. So I think this is pretty funny and they've got a really good future though. So I gave this match about a 9 out of 10. I thought it was a pretty good match actually. Next we had a cutscene with Damien Sandow. I love this guy. He's so funny how posh and everything he is. And he was getting interviewed and he said that he was going to destroy Dispose of Brodus Clay because he didn't think that the dancing should be in the WWE is a disgrace and uh, basically he did exactly that as Brodus Clay was coming in doing his usual dancing and everything Damien Sandow came out quickly and beat him up just outside the ramp and he just completely disposed of him he took his legs out and everything and then the crowd didn't really give a reaction to be honest they weren't booing him they weren't cheering him but he did his business and Damien Sandow just walked off and that was basically the match. There was no match. But I did think his actions were pretty predictable so I was expecting it and I thought it was pretty disappointing. So I'm not going to give a rating for that match at all because it was pretty disappointing. But if I was going to give that cutscene or like little action a rating, I think I'd give it about 5 out of 10. It was pretty poor and weird really. The crowd weren't really doing anything at all. It was kind of just them and no commentator at all was speaking and everything. So it was really disappointing. Then we have another cutscene and it's with AJ's office again with Daniel Bryan. I love how they're using AJ but I kind of miss their like relationship thing. I thought that's really good and I don't really like how she hates him now. But anyway, she was basically announcing that he was going to have a SummerSlam match against Kane. Daniel Bryan didn't know anything about it. What's happening about Charlie Sheen anyway guys? But she was going yes and he was going no. And she was going yes and he was going no for like 10 minutes and... That's the match for SummerSlam, guys, so I'm really looking forward to that match. That'll be absolutely amazing. Anyway, the next match was kind of the toilet break, and it was Kelly Kelly, who hasn't been seen in the WWE for months because she had a really, really long run in the WWE, basically having a match nearly every week, which was a really, really good job by her, and it was a cheeky wank time as well. So, yeah, we had that match, and basically it was against Eve, 
and the outcome was a Kelly Kelly win. She was really, really feisty in this match. I think I could probably have predicted that because she really wanted to come back with a bang, and she just did a really quick rollover, got a one, two, three. A typical Divas match lasted pretty much longer than the Kane versus Miz match, which I was really looking forward to, which is just at the end. So I'll talk about that later, guys. So I was pretty disappointed about that match actually, but I don't really like the Divas matches anyway. So I would have given it about six out of ten. Now HHH comes out, and the crowd didn't really give him a big pop. Really, I was really disappointed disappointed but he was basically talking about what everybody else is apparently talking about in the backstage the Brock Lesnar or the Bork Laser versus Triple H and then Brock Lesnar the Beast comes out with Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar does actually speak this time with his little puff the voice says that he will beat Triple H and he doesn't want his family and friends to see him get beat up but Shawn Michael is adamant that Triple H will win and he says that he will be in Triple H's corner come SummerSlam which will be awesome so it does mean that Shawn Michaels will be at SummerSlam which will be amazing and then Triple H did come out with amazing pop, much bigger pop than HBK surprisingly, even though it was in his hometown. And you could definitely feel the tension in the ring. Lesnar pussies out again. He basically leaves the ring. WWE are kind of making, building it up so it looks like Triple H is in control. I'm not sure why they're doing that or what it's really going to be doing. But they are trying to make it look like Triple H is in control. Cole then shows a, a tout from Sheamus in the car in the middle of Texas. And he's got some Mexican food. And he's eating it in it. And it's really funny. He starts singing a song. And Cole is really angry. He thinks he's stolen it. Lola thinks that it's he's just he's just borrowing it. He's just borrowing it, man. He's just borrowing it. And then we get a commercial break, and Jericho is seen sitting at the announcers table, and he watches the match between Dolph Ziggler versus Alex Riley. This match was hilarious. Basically, Ziggler was just chatting shit to Jericho throughout the match on the announcers table, and Ziggler was once taken just after the game. Jericho stood on the announcers table and touted, basically recorded him and touted him showing off and then Alex Riley snuck underneath Ziggler and pinned him for the 1-2-3 and then Jericho stood up and said that Alex Riley was trending on Twitter and it was really really funny you've got to watch it, I thought it was really really funny you're probably not thinking it's funny but it was so yeah that was a really really good match, I really enjoyed that and I'm going to give that a 9.5 out of 10, the best match of the night by the way guys AJ then tweeted on Twitter saying that the two people that didn't get in the vote, so Kane and The Miz, would face off in a one-on-one -on -one next. And I think AJ is doing a really, really good job. I've said this before. She's doing an awesome job, and I think the matches are really good. They're basically just a PPV every week. We then get another tout from Sheamus with his Mexican food. You can definitely tell that they're building something up for SummerSlam. Anyway, we got the match, Kane versus Miz, and Miz was easily beaten. The match was really, really short. It was shorter than the Divas match, like I said. Miz basically got choke slams. he got the quick pin, Miz was making crucial mistakes, we've seen him being really confident in the last few weeks and it looked like he matured, he was making some really really easy mistakes and Miz seemed like he was trying to get this match over and done with but he soon got pinned by Kane and Kane won the beast. We then got another cutscene from Daniel Bryan complaining that the fans were using yes 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 and it was his quote, I think I think this storyline kind of gimmick thing is ridiculous, it's so gay, it's actually so ridiculous, like it's just a word, anyway we got a cutscene from Daniel Daniel Bryan, who's getting, he's getting really boring now and stupid and immature, and Sheamus was shown with the Ferrari in the backstage with grass and food everywhere, smoke and mud, and it was really, really funny, and then Bryan comes in, rips up a fan's yes poster, which is funny as well, but he, he just looks so angry and retarded, <laughs> he does look like a goat, and it's just stupid, they've just done it way too far, WWE, you just need to stop this yes, yes, yes thing now, and get a new gimmick, I think. And then it shows Alberto Del Rio shouting at Rodriguez and pushing him all over, threats him and everything, and then Cena comes into an amazing pop. I love Cena the Beast, comes in, and Brian goes to the crowd in the match, just in the middle of the match, shouting at them, and he actually literally goes up to a guy and starts saying, no, and then the guy goes, yes, for like 10 minutes, no joke, like 10 minutes while he was doing to AJ, and Brian did actually reverse an FU or an AA into a DT submission, but then the STFU reversed to a no lock. Brian was doing everything he could. Apparently he's got a reversal for everything. And then Cena gets an AA out of nowhere. He wasn't in control at all. And Cena gets the win out of nowhere. Really surprising actually. But apparently he wins every match. But you know. And then Punk comes out and wafts the WWE title in front of Cena. Cena throws CM Punk. And Sho then comes in. For God's sake. I hate this guy. And Punk beats him up. And she Cena going for AA on Big Show. CM Punk 
Punk stops him and then CM Punk nicks one of the headsets and says that he thinks it's his fault that the WWE have turned on him because he let people do it and he should have should have made them give him respect. Three of the last Raws have ended with CM Punk like this, which I don't, I hate this. CM Punk is rubbish. and We need a new WWE champion. I'm not sure what you guys think. And then Show reversed Punk at the end and gave him a knockout. And then he gave Cena a knockout. And it's kind of a warning from Big Show that he might be around for SummerSlam. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. I think Raw was pretty good. I gave it a, kind of like an 8 and a 7.5 out of 10. It was alright. It was pretty good, like I say. So watch it if you want. It's alright. So yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.